Now you can also listen to us on your favorite podcast with just a search, Faith Temple and Cog. Listen on the go with your favorite streaming platforms, like YouTube, Spotify, Audible, Apple, Amazon Music, Google, Facebook, iHeartRadio and TuneIn. If you would like more information about us, you can visit our website at www.ftnfcog.org. Join us Sunday at 11 a.m. Online giving made easy with Giveify. Try it now. Like and subscribe to our YouTube page. Go to youtube.com slash at ftnfcog. God, we just thank you and give you the glory and all the praise this morning. We ask you, Father, now, Lord, to have your way in this service. We ask you let the Holy Spirit minister to each and every one of us, even though we're not in one location, God, but your spirit can touch us wherever we're at. We ask you, Father God, hallelujah, pray when we pray for our sister, uh, Deacon McLean and Mother Smith, Father, even though they're not here with us, Lord, we pray that you continue to bless them, move on their families, Lord, hallelujah, continue to let them minister and do the work that you called them to do. Oh, Father God, we actually continue to move on our family members, Lord, loved ones, Lord, to save and the unsaved, Father. Bless, Father God. Hallelujah. For you are the one that can save to the utmost. Father, we thank you again for this day, Lord. We just truly magnify and glorify your name, for you are God. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth. You created us, God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And we thank you, God. You chose us, God. And we thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. To be made in your likeness and image. Father, we bless your holy name. Uh, my Lord, I thank you. And I praise you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. I praise you. Hallelujah for this day, God. Oh, continue to bless faith temple, God. Continue to bless the nation of Nafgog, Father. Continue to move on the pastors and the men their congregation, Lord. We ask you special blessings for this uh, Nafgog, Pastor Grant, Lord, and Mother Grant, Father. Let them continue to live in your overflow. Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name, God. Oh, God, anybody that's feeling ailments in their bodies, God. Oh, Father. Father, whatever disease and disease that's hindering, Lord, we ask you, Lord, we rebuke it and ask you according to your word by his stripes. We are healed, and we thank you for that right now, Father. Bless right now, Father. Uh, open your word up, God, to us, Lord. Give us understanding that your word, God, your word, God, renew our minds, God, and put it in our hearts, God, that we will govern our lives accordingly, Father. Oh, Father, have your way right now, Holy Spirit. Use this vessel to speak your word, God, to be an encouragement to us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray that the house of God say amen. Amen, amen. amen and amen. Uh, truly thank God again for what he's doing in our lives. Uh, I'm be coming out of First Peter, amen, starting at the verse 1. I mean, starting at chapter 1. Hallelujah. And we're going to read start at verse 6. And seven is a very familiar passage. Amen. Uh, Y'all have heard it and seen it before and read it before. Amen. Uh, say amen when you have it. And I uh, can't see. But uh, first Peter, the first chapter, verses six and seven. And it reads as such. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season. If need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold, that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Peter. Amen. The Apostle Peter is writing this epistle, and uh, he is stating that uh, we need to rejoice when we are going through manifold temptations. And I know that's not easy for anybody to do when we are going through troubled times or heavy 
uh, heaviness through manifold temptation, but it's when you know who you are in Christ, hallelujah, you can find, you might be heaviness, you can still be heaviness and still praise the Lord. Uh, Lord gave me another scripture to try to help you understand uh, what Peter is talking about in the New Testament. And he took me over to Ezekiel, the 13th chapter, 16th chapter, excuse me, of Ezekiel, and verse 1. And I'm going to read down to verse 6. And while I'm reading down to verse 6, I want you to think about what God is saying he has done in our lives. Ezekiel, the 16th chapter, verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, and say, Thus said the Lord God unto Israel, Jerusalem, Thy birth and thy nativity is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother a Hittite. And as for thy nativity, in the day that thou was born, thy navel was not cut. Neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all, nor swaddled at all. None I pity thee to do anything these unto thee, to have compassion upon thee. But thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of thy person in the day that thou was born. And when I passed by thee and saw thee polluted in thy own blood, I said unto thee, when thou was, was in thy blood, live. Yea, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Now, Ezekiel is writing about God. And God is trying to tell Israel the abominations, how they have sinned against him. Now, we all got to know that God is talking to us. If we are his people, and that's in, that's in what Ezekiel said, Jerusalem, say to Jerusalem, they are abomination. But you got to understand the history where God has put us. And God, hallelujah, the history of the Jew, Jerusalem, is that they were God's select chosen people. Now, when God came to told Ezekiel, tell them, of the abomination, and he told, reminded them where I brought you, how I found you. They were in a, a people that was living in sin. They were born originally. They were, God told them that you are my people. I've chosen you. You were in Egypt. You came out of Egypt. I can give you the promised land. The promised land was Canaan, and you notice that they were born in Canaan. Hallelujah! And then they were not supposed to mingle with the people of the land. They were supposed to stay free and separated from them but now it's gotten to the point where he says that your father is a uh amorite and your mama a hittite so in other words they done mingled with the world mingled with the people around them that they don't have their bloodline where they were uh, committing idolatry with god because god said you are my people then you're supposed to say pure to me hallelujah but they had all gone with the, the people that were around them and saw mingling with them. In other words, we're supposed to stay separate from the world. Uh, we're supposed to be holy and not holy. Can righteousness be unrighteousness? Can light be with darkness? It can't. So you have to understand what God is trying to say. You're supposed to have stay separated and so only me. But because you wanted to be a part of the world, because you wanted to do the things of the world, you are committing abominations. He said, now, remember, before I, when I came, nobody owned you. Nobody wanted to be around you. Nobody left you out there as, as, a, as a, a child that nobody wanted. And God said, when I came by, I found you and I seen you in your dying state of sin. And I called you and I said, listen. Because of that, I'm going to tell you, live. I grab you. I, I, I assaulted you. I, I, I walked you in swaddle clothes, and I took you in and embraced you as myself. Let me slow down a little bit because I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But I want to explain to y'all, hallelujah, it was a custom back in those days. I, I told you about the mother and father. And uh, the, uh, the nativity, nobody was there. 
them neighbor. Nobody's supposed to cut the neighbor cord. You know the neighbor cord that gives you life? You're supposed to cut it. And then when you cut it, uh, it gives you separation from your mama's womb. You're not on that life support anymore. What God is saying, I, when you was out there born in the world, in the, out in the field, hallelujah, I had to come out. Nobody cut you. Nobody separated you from the world. Hallelujah. So when I came by, hallelujah, I had to do the cut. He said, also, he said, nobody was there even to wash the blood off of you. Nobody was even to, to wash all the stuff, sin and stuff that was on you. I had to do that. Hallelujah. Nobody was there to put you in swallow clothes. Hallelujah. Nobody was there to wrap you and keep you warm. Hallelujah. But God said, I did all that. In the back in the day, they called salted. We, we call it that nowadays we, well, when we kill a pig or a killer, uh, and we, they used to back in the day, hallelujah, when I came up, they put salt in, they rub salt on the skin, in the meat, all down in the meat to purify it or to get, to sort of be uh, set and cured. Amen. But back in the day when they had babies born, they used to wash them and they rub salt on the skin to toughen the skin up. Amen. So they said, that's what he said when he said, thou was not salted at all. Hallelujah. So nobody rub salt on you to toughen your skin so that you'll be uh, able to receive the element and it does something to your muscles also while they're doing it. So nobody was there to do all that. Nobody had pity on you. Nobody had mercy on you. Nobody did all these things, but I did. Hallelujah. I had compassion on you. Nobody else was going to do it. I, they load you. They, they, they didn't even want you to be born because your parents was a one and you was over here and the mother was this. So they didn't really want you, hallelujah, but I took you in. I seen you and I took you in, hallelujah. And I loved you and I prepared you and I raised you up, hallelujah. I provided for you. And God said, I provided for each and every one of us. God has provided for us. He took care of us. In every essence of our lives, God take care of us. He loved us beyond any kind of man's love, hallelujah. He said he loved us before we were born, hallelujah. And so we have to understand, that's what I'm trying to get you to understand, the love that God has for you, we have to embrace that love and don't forget it. Each one of everybody that's a, that's a parent know that they had to discipline their children. Everybody know that they had to discipline them. They love their children, and they had to discipline them. So when they discipline them, nobody likes to be disciplined, right? So when you did get disciplined, you get mad and you get mad at your parents. But as you get older, you realize the importance of the parents disciplining us because it was their discipline that caused us not to go to jail. It was their discipline in our life that caused us to do right in school. It was our discipline in, uh, at home that caused you to go to school and respect the teachers and their principals or the rules and the laws of mankind. The discipline that you learn at home through your parents caused you to be good citizens in, in, in this world that we live in. Hallelujah. So now what God is saying, I seen you in the field. I took you in when nobody else took you in. When nobody else would have you. So I had to raise you up. And in that raising, I had to discipline you. It's not that I don't love you, but I love you because I had to discipline you. So through discipline, discipline, we learn something. So that's what we pick up in First Peter. Peter said, hallelujah, uh, that we got to rejoice though we're in manifold temptations. Because our father loved us, he got to discipline us. And when we're being disciplined because of his love, and that's what we got, can't forget, we get grumbling and mumbling. Man, I'm tired. How long I got to go through this? How long? Because, but you're forgetting who, where you, what status you were in, you got to remember that God loved you. So when God loves you, you're going to have to go through some things. All right. Hallelujah. When we're, we're in, you greatly rejoice. Though now, uh, for a little while, for, for a season, uh, momentarily, if need be, if need be, and if need be, I would do something wrong. Doesn't mean Marvin had to do, uh, had to be disciplined. I had to be disciplined. So it's if you if the child 
doesn't do anything, there, there's no need for uh, dischastisement, right? So if need be, though you're going to for a season, if need be, if you do something wrong, if you walk away from God, if the, uh, your faith is not where it should be, if the God says that I, I try my servant Job, try him. If need be, if God wants it, allows it, then it's needful that your faith holds true. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Mm. So, uh, need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptation. Y'all ever picked up something that was heavy? Uh, when we was in the military, we had this backpack. Uh, we had to fill our backpacks with rocks. Doesn't make sense. Why? Fill your backpacks with rock, but it was training us to be able to carry the load. So sometimes you could your your rocks were heavier than the stuff you put in your backpacks. So you you, you it was to just that if you put your clothes and all knees and then and your shovels and all that stuff in your backpack, you could carry it. But you had, the rocks weighed more, way more than what it. But we had to endure that knowing that later we're going to be able to carry the, the light load won't be no problem to us so we picked up 100 pounds but our load was only 50 pounds once it took the uh when we put the load so it's easier to carry 50 pounds than it is 100 pounds but if you're training to carry 100 pounds when they put 50 pounds on you it won't feel like anything's there all right so uh so we have to understand that the heaviness uh, the, through manifold temptation, going through several things at the same time, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it, it, it can get you to be disencouraged in your walk with God. It can cause you to start looking at the greener pastures on the other side of the fence. You start to look at what the neighbors got and what you don't have. You start looking at your situation compared to millionaires. But why, why do we do that? Why do we look at uh, the thing we see on TV and say, that's how our life should be. That, that's that's a fantasy world. Uh, what they're portraying on TV is not supposed, is, it doesn't happen in real life. This is something man has made up to get people to watch the show. Hallelujah. So you had to keep that in mind. We compare our life where well, they got this and we don't have no, well, they don't, they're not happy. Look, we, we know many a, a movie star or, or, or performers or famous people that have taken their own lives, that have overdosed in drugs, and because they were missing happiness, they were missing the joy of the Lord. I say, hallelujah! They they couldn't find peace in their lives, in all the money that they had. They couldn't find peace and love. Hallelujah! But God said, don't. When you go through the manifold temptations, you got to remember who 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 raised you, who brought you out of the field. Who, who shared the love of God, that embraced you to cause you? Who told you to live? God said, I did that. And when we're going through, we can't look at the things around us. We got to hold on to God. Hallelujah. Look at verse 3, uh, no, the, 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 verse 4, hallelujah. So, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. You're going through. We Sometimes we get our mind mixed up with, what, what we're going through, hallelujah. Look, just remember, you have an inheritance in heaven that is incorruptible because God said, I gave it to you. Hallelujah. I'm preparing you that you be like Jesus Christ when I come back. He said, you have an inheritance in heaven, your hope. Hallelujah. He said, but don't let the manifold temptations cause your faith to get weak. This is when you try, the triangle of your faith got to prove that you are strong. Remember what he told Ezekiel. Nobody wanted you. Nobody would have nothing to do with you. You were cast out in the field, hoping that you would die. You were living in sin. Hallelujah. Thinking it was all right. Hallelujah. And God said, because I came by, because I seen your abomination, because I seen you, uh, you dying in your own sin. Hallelujah. And I said, live. He gave us life. And we have to understand, hallelujah, that we can't get caught up and let our man heaviness and through manifold temptations cause us to shrink back 
on God. This is the time you have to put on the whole arm of God. You have to put on the helmet of salvation. You got to put on the breastplate of righteousness. You got to pick up the shield of faith. You got to gird yourself with the belt of truth. Hallelujah. You got to put on the shoes of the gospel, the, the, the spirit of the spirit. And pick up your sword. Hallelujah, which is the word of God. Hallelujah. You got to be clothed in what God has given us. Hallelujah. And not worry about your situation. Things on this world is going to pass away. And God saying, hallelujah, remember, hallelujah, let me go down to verse 7. This is it, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. We went over this, we got taught on this, and we have spoken on this. When they heat up gold and the, all the impurities of gold, the, all the things that's inside of gold, all that they call it the drop will come to the top and they scoop that off with a tool to separate it from the gold and set it oh so that when you comes out it's all pure gold there's no dross in there hallelujah so this is what god is saying that you're going through something but where's your faith hallelujah you're going through this are you trusting god for it are you are you are looking at what i provided for you and taking it for granted Hallelujah, and say, well, I, I, I'm going to do this, and use your blessings, hallelujah, use what the love of God to twist it around it, I can, you can sin here and sin there, hallelujah, and God said, hallelujah, I got to get the impurities, I love you, hallelujah, the heaviness is going to cause you to seek God, the heaviness is going to cause you to pray to God, the heaviness is going to cause you to, to get into the word of God, hallelujah, and pray, Hallelujah, hallelujah, to get an understanding so that you can get some relief. Hallelujah. But God is saying, I love you still, no matter what you're going through. Hallelujah. I'm the one that said, live. Hallelujah. Well, I'm the one that said, I give you life and not death. Hallelujah. I'm the one that sent, sent my only begotten son for you that you could have eternal life. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, my God. Hallelujah. He said, Though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have to learn and we got to get this understanding inside of, I got to praise God no matter what. Hallelujah. He woke me up this morning. I could not have gotten out of bed. Hallelujah. Unless God woke me up. I could not come from a stroke, rebound from a stroke unless God healed my mind, healed my body. Hallelujah. Told my mind how to operate the left arm. Told my mind how to move my leg again. Hallelujah. It was God's word that did all that. It was God's grace. That did all this is mercy and love for me, hallelujah. And I cannot forget that, hallelujah. I got to praise him in the midnight hour. I got to praise him, hallelujah, early in the morning. What the psalm writer said, joy cometh, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning, hallelujah. We got to learn that we're going through some things, but I'm going to go through these things giving God some praise. I'm going to go through these things giving God all the glory and all the honor, hallelujah, that is due unto God because I was in sin. I was an abomination to him, but he came by, he seen me, and oh, wretched man that I was, and said, live, and he gave me life, hallelujah. He gave me the whole Holy Spirit, hallelujah, the gift of eternal life. He gave it to me. I got to praise God. I got to get happy when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. Hallelujah. I got to praise him. Saints of God, we got to understand, hallelujah, Ezekiel, the people back in those days, hallelujah, the Old Testament should have been praising God. We say that we, after God has done me all those good things, I will praise God. I will give God all the glory and all the praise. But saints, we're in the same situation now. Look what God has given us in our lives. Look where we are. Hallelujah. I looked at the uh, news. I read an article. Hallelujah. I would never thought that this would be found in uh, the United States. Hallelujah. But leprosy, 159 cases of leprosy broke out in, in Florida. Hallelujah. Now, 159 cases of leprosy? Oh, my Lord, my God. I thought that was just something that I read in the Old Testament, hallelujah, disease. But to be found in the United States, hallelujah. Oh, wretched generation that we are, hallelujah. Oh, we are in serious trouble. And the saints of God, hallelujah, you got to hold on. You got to be the light to this dark world, hallelujah. Leprosy is being found, hallelujah. In the midst of a 21st generation, hallelujah, 21st century, rather, hallelujah, leprosy, hallelujah, oh, my God, hallelujah, 
we got to know where God has brought us from. Hallelujah. He, did, he healed our bodies. He gave us long life. We need to praise God, even though we're going through some trying times. Hallelujah. Trying times that will cause you to get uh, upset with your situation. But just remember who you are to God. He made a covenant with us. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be there. I'll provide for you. Hallelujah. He is God. What won't God do? It? If he sacrificed his only son that we could live, how much more love do God have for us? As we don't studying in our series, hallelujah, the, what, the, the, the three what's of uh, Ephesians, hallelujah. And, and I want to go one more touch, one more thing, I'm going to close out. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with a joy unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. You're receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Hallelujah. Joy unspeakable. We should have joy in our hearts at all times. Nothing should be discouraging us. But we have faith in God who is faithful. And God never fails. He said here, be there. He'll be there. Think about it. God said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, hallelujah, Jesus. And you can just condemn in Jesus' name. So we got to understand that this is what God is trying to get us to the point. That joy, rejoice, joy unspeakable. Hallelujah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I should not fear no evil. Huh? My God, if I can go through the valley of the shadow of death and fear no evil, because God is with me. He's fighting my battles. He's take, taking me through this. Hallelujah. And then he told you over the sound of goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. My God, hallelujah. Uh, there should be joy, unspeakable joy, full of glory. We got to understand God wants us to be happy, not sad. Stop looking at this and look at God. Hallelujah. Look up. Hallelujah. Look up to where you're sorry. Look unto Jesus. Hallelujah. And you'll get joy. That's what David says. Sing a song. When you sing a song, hallelujah, it brings you joy. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Now you see him now. You still believe, but uh, with this joy full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, hallelujah, because you stand fast, because you can uh, hold on, hallelujah, you're not going to turn to the right or to the left, hallelujah, Jesus said, I'm going, you're going to receive the end of your faith, the result of your faith, because you kept the faith, because you're not letting this one influence you or that one influence you, you're holding on to what the word of God say, hallelujah, everybody that y'all, we told us our last uh, Sunday, hallelujah, the false prophets is right there. And we and, and we got to make sure that we don't listen to the false things that's all in our ears. This and that and this and that. If anything in this word, that's what the, is what we need to govern our lives with. This word. This is what tells us right and wrong. This word. This tells us everything that God has provided for us. This is what we can and we can't do. His word, his word, the Holy Bible, hallelujah. And we got to look at that and hold on to that. So that so when we get down there, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of us, so that we know, that we know, that we know that where our end is, our salvation is in heaven. Hallelujah. We can be able to receive the, uh, uh, the, uh, the reward of our faith, hallelujah, we can be to hold on to and not let the world dictate us, hallelujah, don't let you end up with a, a father that's an Amorite, don't let you end up with a mother that is a Hittite, hallelujah, hallelujah, now what I'm saying is you can't go over here dipping and dabbing and dipping and dabbing over here, hallelujah, and stay true to God, the bride is, the, the groom is Jesus Christ, we are the bride of Christ, Hallelujah. He's coming back for his bride. Hallelujah. The groom is coming back to marry the bride. We are the church is the bride, not a building. The church is what God is coming back for. We are the church. Hallelujah. And we got to make sure that we are not hooked up with no Hittite or no Amorite. Hallelujah. We got to make sure we're not hooked up 
with the world, hallelujah, on this hand and with the world on that hand, hallelujah. We got to stay pure to God and be looking for our Savior, Jesus Christ, to come back. Who is the groom that we are married to? Hallelujah. He said in the word of God, he's the head of the church. Hallelujah. And we are the, um, the body of Christ. Hallelujah. He is our head. And we have to remember that we are hooked to him. Nothing, hallelujah, nothing will happen to Christ's body. Nothing. He keeps it and he protects it. And we had to realize who we are, even though for a season we're going through manifold temptation. If need be, if need be, if you're walking right, hallelujah, your faith is strong in the Lord, hallelujah, you, all you got to do is trust him. Hallelujah, there won't be manifold temptation. There won't be a heaviness. Hallelujah, the heaviness because you're praising God. The heaviness, I, I, I'm just going to give God all the glory. Hallelujah, that's why I, with that song that Elder Wright sing, uh, David's wife got upset because David was dancing out in the street, dancing, with, came out of his clothes. He was praising the Lord. He had a heaviness to praise God. We got to get to the point where we want to have this type of, I don't care who's around me, I'm going to praise God. Because when I think, hallelujah, have I think like the old people say, hallelujah, hallelujah, I feel like going on. Why do you feel like going on? I got to see what the end going to be. Hallelujah. We got to get, we got to check uh, as I just came to me about people shut corn. They put out the, all the, the uh, the shuck of the corn, the green around the corn, the fruit of the fruit of the vine is the corn itself. So you want to pull all the shuck off the corn, layer by layer. If you look at the corn and surround it, layer by layer, you got to pull that off. That's what we have to do. When we're going to try of our faith, he's pulling off layer by layer that's hindering us, that's causing us not to be seen as the good fruit that we are, hallelujah. And when you take all that off, then we become the fruit that God is looking for and we'll be, and we, and we be beautiful to him, hallelujah. And we'll be the world of see Christ in us, hallelujah. I thank God, hallelujah, again, uh, for this message, amen, uh, that we got to realize that God gave us life and not death, hallelujah. And we need to know that we're going through things, we got to trust God. We got to hold on to God in everything that we're doing. We got to praise him. We got to remember the joy that you think. Sing on Sunday morning. You got to remember the, the joy that you have. Hallelujah. That when God first saved you. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, the joy that you have. Hallelujah. When, 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 you, when you, something happened, a miracle happened in your life. Hallelujah. Uh, when the doctor said you had this. Hallelujah. But then God said not so. Hallelujah. Uh, we got to remember the joy that we felt. Hallelujah. When we had uh, uh, salvation, when we first got saved. I truly thank God again for uh, you uh, being attentive to the word. I hope that you received something out of this word. Amen. Or really understand that we are special and precious in God's eyes. Hallelujah. He called us out of darkness into his marvelous light and that we should for so forth the praises to him amen we thank god again hallelujah for this message uh, as always uh we want god to get the glory out of it and we want to live that we can live hallelujah that he is, gets all the glory out of our lives i'm uh trying to but i have to go back to verse five i want to be back to verse, who are first peter first who are kept by the power of God through faith. Huh. Uh, how are we going to make it through this manifold? Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. We can't make it through our heaviness or our um, manifold temptations. It is God that's going to keep us if we are faithful to Him. Hallelujah. Who are kept by the power of God. Through faith, hallelujah, do you trust God? Do you have faith in God that he's going to do it? His God, hallelujah, hallelujah. And if we hold on, it's going to be revealed in the last time. I truly, again, thank God for this word. Amen. 
Hallelujah. Hope that you've been encouraged and know that when you're going through, just hold on to God. Whatever you need, God has. And this world, if you keep looking at this world and think that this world is going to be the answer to all your problems, how are you going to find out just that we got uh, leprosy in the midst of the state? We're going to find out there's a whole lot of more things that's going to come down the line that we're going to find out. We are, uh, and they're going to find out that we are glad that we are saved in this hour. Amen. I, I just, it looks like doom and gloom for the world. So why people want to stay into the world and not get alive to Christ, hallelujah, it doesn't make sense when God said, I can heal you of all sicknesses and disease. I provide for you whenever you need, hallelujah, uh, whatever, whenever. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God's just asking all of us, hey amen, come unto me. Hallelujah. Your labor, and I give you rest. Amen. Come unto me. Hallelujah. And, and he'll give us rest. Amen. I truly, again, thank God, all of y'all, for tuning in this morning. Amen. Saints, I, I solicit you, amen, to pay your tithes and send an offering into us. Amen. Not to us, but to the church. Amen. So we are trying to hallelujah, get the things needed to get done so that we can have a sanctuary where we can come together and praise God. Amen. So, but it got to be done. We walk on by faith, but we're also going to need uh, financial uh, help. Amen. So whatever God leading on your hearts to do, amen, we ask you to do it. Amen. Amen. So that we can be and uh, do what God uh, is calling us to do now. I know God doesn't need money, hallelujah, but his, sometimes you got to be obedient to his word. And his word said, when you come to his house to bring an offering and your tithes, amen, to the storehouse, amen, hallelujah. He just wants to see if we're going to be obedient to what we had to love for money. It's a difference, amen. So be blessed, saints. Elder, do you have any words? No, sir. All right. And that's nothing else. We're going to ask the Elder Wright to dismiss us. Yes, Father God in heaven, once again, we come to tell you thank you, Father. We thank you for the word that you have um, placed before us, Father. And God, let us walk in the obedience of it, Father, in the name of Jesus God. We ask you to touch everyone on the time of us again, Father. Touch your guy, even though Mr. Lancaster is there, Father. Just his mind is him right now, Father, in the name of Jesus God. We thank you right now, Father for your work, God, that you have plans for our lives, and we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise for it, Father. God, let us, oh God, muse on this word, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, that you all throughout the week, Father, that you have placed in our hearts, oh God, to go for Father, and I give you glory and honor in Jesus' name, I pray the blessings of the Lord be upon you, and we bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen, amen. And hey, don't forget this, uh, Wednesday night Bible study, Saints, go over your material. Amen. Hallelujah. I might ask some questions this time. Hallelujah. Uh, and put y'all in, in the spot so that uh, we'll see. Study to show that self approved. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Be blessed, saints. I'm going to have a whole Bible study.